Hey, what's going on, everybody? Movie Phantom here, joined by my girlfriend, Maya. And uh, yeah, time for a Movie Phantom's horror review. This week, we are reviewing 2008's The Eye. Uh, which I reviewed the 2002, and it's on my channel. Oh, you this week, didn't you? Yeah. I forgot about that, yeah. That's kind of weird. You did the original, we're doing the remake. And Scream 3. Bam! Roman did it. So I just ruined that for everybody out there. Roman did it. Um, all right, so let's do this. Let's get right into it. We'll start off with the eye, where Jessica Alba, uh, at a young age, she has an accident. Her sister and her were playing with firecrackers or some shit, mm -hmm. and blast her fucking eyes the shit. And uh, years later, she be, uh, she gets a uh, transplant. Uh, however, she age five or is it ten? It doesn't matter. And basically, she gets a transplant, but now she can see the spirit world. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Not a fan of the eye. Uh, I've seen it three times now. I watched it in the theaters. Didn't pay for it. I worked there so I could see it for free. Uh, and then when we bought it, we watched it. And then I was like, well, shit, I need to watch it again because I'm going to review it and I want it fresh in my mind. And I'll be honest with you, after three times, still don't care for it. Like, it didn't... Three times? I thought you four because I thought you watched it with me when I reviewed it. Oh shit, maybe I did watch Fortnite. Either way, it doesn't matter. Upon repeat viewings, it didn't get any better. It's still just... It's mediocre, lazy, Japanese remake bullshit. Um, There's like a lot more added to the, the second one. The, the original. The original? There's like a lot more so added to now, it. And this is where I'm going to lose some uh, street cred. Some horror street cred. I've never seen the original. She's actually one up on me for the first time ever. She saw the original. I saw clips of it with her. Uh, but I didn't really, well, I was busy, I was doing my own thing. Um, my main problem with this, I'm not going to give too much away, because this is, it's still, you know, new-ish. So no, I don't, not really. Oh, well, it's still. It's, it's, it's ten years. It's been over ten years. Do your math one more time. Okay, there's ten. Anyways, so, anyways, I won't ruin it for you guys, because it's still within that ten-year buffer. And, um, I think right now, my main problem with this movie is, and I haven't seen the original, and I don't know how in-depth you were watching the original, but with this one, there was so much room to make it ambiguous. Like, and even though I guess in the end you, you would know, yes, it's going to be spirits for real, but I feel like with this movie you could have done a whole, it's in her mind. The problem is, they don't leave that, they don't give you a chance to think that, because right off the bat, the very first scene where she opens her eyes for the first time in years, you see someone standing in the background that's not there. They show you, like, you know, what's really happening. You know, the clear vision of the world. You know, there's only there, there's her sister, the doctor, and a nurse. But then when she opens her eyes and it's kind of fuzzy, you can't quite see, there's a fourth person standing there. And instantly the music gets all dark and ominous. And I'm like, really? Are we really? Uh, and I don't like that. I feel like you could have left that there. Play the music normal. She's seeing for the first time uplifting type music. Instead, it's like, oh no, you're in a horror movie just because you're fucking stupid at home. You're a retard. We have to tell you what's scary and what's not. And this is scary. The person just walking out of the room. That's all it was. It wasn't even anything else. This one, when the, the person gets hit by like a vehicle or something, mm -hmm. and, the, and the original, it's a little boy, and this one's like it's a dog. Oh, okay. Um, no, so the, like I said, it's. Things like that really bugged me about it. Uh, another thing was these evil spirits. These uh, did they have a name? Shadow oh, people shit. or what? And that, like, I don't know. They changed the room too, like the room that she's in. Or stay with me here. Stay with me here. The the dark figures that take you when you're yeah. basically they're, 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 they're grim reapers is what they are. And they take the, the people. Yeah, yeah, to the other side. And now, no one is, like, fearing the other side. Everybody goes willingly. And yet, they're portrayed as fucking evil. They growl and snarl at her. And it just seems like, I don't know, she's constantly butting into their shit. Prime example. First night she's in the hospital with her hazy vision. She's sitting there, and she sees someone talking to the old lady next to her. Now... A good movie would at least accept a couple establishing scenes where she's talking to this old lady to let us know that there is some kind of relationship there. But here, there's none. So you just get this, it, this random old lady, apparently she knows the name to, and this person. Now, she's blurry-eyed. She can't see. If you can see clearly, 
maybe it'd be a little different. But she can't. She can only see shapes and shadows anyways. So, as far as she knows, it's a fucking doctor coming in to check on her. There's a problem. She don't know. But yeah, she's just like, where are you going? Where are you taking her? What, what's going on? I'm like, why would you be asking any of these fucking questions? Roll back over, go to fucking sleep. It just seems like she was constantly throwing herself in situations like this. And I didn't like that either. Once again, it was trying way too hard to be a scary horror movie. And it came off very bland. There was really no jump scares at all. Uh, in fact, the, the one jump scare it could have been, they showed in the trailer, is where she's looking through the peephole. Because she's smoking outside. Or, you know, it, the vision. Cause she, she not only can she see dead people, she can also see premonitions of what's going to happen. And she can also see shit that's already happened in the past. Like she has, she can see more than you think. And there's a scene where she's looking through the peephole and something, you know, demon ah, jumps up at her or whatever. And it probably would have worked, but you saw it in the trailer. So literally when that scene comes up, ah, and you're like, eh, whatever. Uh, I, I, like I said, uh, I don't think, now, I, I read a lot of critics said that her performance was really bad. I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. I mean, it, it was serviceable. Uh, I thought it was kind of neat. The guy, and I, I don't really want to call him a love interest, but I guess, uh, he's not really a boyfriend, but... Her doc or her uh, the therapist or something, yeah. like an eye therapist. Um, he was the guy from Face Off. He's done a lot of other stuff too, but I don't give a fuck. It's Pollock Troy from Face Off. It's Nick Cage's little brother. Fucking awesome. And I saw him like, oh shit, that's, that's that's fucking Troy. That's awesome. That's it. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I I honestly am not huge on this. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure I'll have some fans of it out there, but. To me, in the ending, seemed very Mothman Prophecies. Just without, like, to me, I just remember the first time I watched Mothman Prophecies, and, well, honestly, I don't want to give anything away. Okay, no, fuck it. Anyways, the ending seemed like it was a light version of Mothman Prophecies, I almost say. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's my review. Sweetie, go ahead. You've been... It's in, like, the same thing as, like, the original, but there's, like, bits and pieces, like, there. Which, um, there's a grandmother staying with her at her house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on for a second. Yeah. And they, uh, the kid that goes like, have you seen my report car or whatever? It says, um, yeah. And the, the original, uh, you don't see him like his a spirit jump out the window till later on. And there's like a scene where the mother's in the counseling or whatever. And talking about it, and that's after that. That's when he the spirits jumped out the window. Uh, which one do you prefer, original or remake? Remake. Prefer the remake. Um, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll review the original, but uh, until then, I'll leave you with this, and I'm gonna say pass. Uh, not not big on it. All right. Graham Ross liked that movie. Really? Yeah. The Easter Egg. Right? Anybody who likes the movie, I mean, that's cool. I'm just saying, for me personally, not a big fan. Not a big fan. All right, up next we got Scream 3. That's right, just a couple years after the events of Scream 2. We get, um, basically a new killer is coming back. Roman did it. Uh, we're going to spoil shit out this one, this is older than 10 years. Uh, anyways, um, you know, Cotton Weary gets picked off early on, and it's clear that there's a new killer on the loose, and he is targeting Sydney. Like, he's not even, like, playing a game. He just wants yeah, he to like, fucking kill he has Sydney. He little thing, box or whatever, and it has everyone's voice on it. That it does. That it does. So, I'll let you start first on this one. Give us your review. What do you think I, of Scream 3? I like it. I had, like, to guess, like, oh, this one's the killer, but it wasn't. So. Yeah. Yeah, Could I like you, it. Can't you guess him, did it? I thought it was, like, good how, how he... he has like all the voices and like, well, come to this party ball. Yeah. And it's not there. And they're like. Instead of the regular ghost face, you know, voice, yeah. he uses everybody, like all the characters' voices yeah. as well. Yeah. So you never know who's on the, uh, you know, the first time you watch, you don't know who the hell's on the phone, so it could be anybody. Yeah. But usually it's the killer. Um, all right. Anything else and you want? Now, um, the freaking doors open mm -hmm. automatically by itself. I thought that was pretty creepy. Oh, yeah. At the end of the movie, or? We talked about off the whole movie. What door opened by itself? At the end, there's a her yeah. her door opens. Yeah. One kind of blood open or whatever. And other doors too open. I just don't remember where. 
a park. Jesus Christ. I give you the reins. I'm like, here, take take the review, and you just took us and, off the track. And uh, Cindy, um, her name's Laura, something like that. Well, she changed it's it for the name. phone yeah. uh, job she took, the counseling job. Yeah, and she's in hiding, and Scream is, like, basically trying to find... Um, Did you just call Linda. the killer Scream? That's not... Ghost face. Oh, my Ghost God. Ghost face, okay. What? Hold on. Okay, so guess we like trying to find Sydney Prescott, and yeah, and yeah. All right, sweet, insightful as always. Uh, Scream Three, I love, and you know what? When it first came out, I, I liked it when it first came out. I know it got a little bit, you know, it's considered a classic now. But I do remember when it first came out, people were just kind of like, ugh. We're tired of these teen whodunit killer, you know, so I, even though they're not teens in this one, but you get the gist. Because um, everybody was doing the whodunit, you know, formula at this point. Like, you know, you Urban Legend. Oh, I remember another part. Throw it out there. But, um, stab three. And basically, like, there's, like, the kills happens. Oh, whatever yeah. Whatever happens in the movie. And they they hired, like, different people to play the characters, which I figured they hired the actual characters. Like Sydney, play herself, and why would they have the real life people play themselves? Like that wouldn't happen. I would do that. This is why you don't make movies. All right. Um, no, but uh, well, I remember when it first came out. It, you know, it had a little. Uh, I liked it. I thought it was really good. Then, and you know, after rewatching it, because I've I've seen the you know the, the trilogy. Fuck part four. Fuck part four. Uh, the the trilogy. Um, I, you know, for a long time, I would say I liked them in order. One's the best, then two, then three. No, I think two, one, and three. Can you quit talking? You're done talking right no, now. You're, no, no. you're, you're your own show. No. Uh, but I gotta say, this is my my number two now. Like it literally is. Like I, I think Roman, spoiler alert, is a better villain. Now I think I liked Billy and Stu better. I think they had a, a certain kind of charisma to them, and I, I loved them. Uh, but I think as far as like the actual motives. Like, this guy has the best fucking reason. Like, you can kind of argue that Billy's mom had a very good reason, too, obviously. But it's like, your son was a psychopath, just like you are, you crazy bitch. You know, so don't really hold a whole lot of water. But, like, this guy, you know, he was just kind of, you know, he was sh sh shunned away. Never knew his mother's love. I, you know, you can you can kind of, you know. Uh, and each death has a, her p picture of the mother. Yep, that's his little M.O., his calling card right there. Drops the, you know, murder or the... Uh, picture by the, uh, by the body. Um, I, I love the story. I love the character. That's another thing. I just watched part four. We just did the review for four, you know, a month or so ago. And I just realized, like, that one just had such... I don't know. I, none of the characters I didn't think were likable. Like, I, I, th I thought all the characters were just ugh, annoying or what. And here, characters that are clearly just going to be killed. Like, they're introduced to be killed off, which is the cast of Stab 3. They are literally only here to be killed off. And yet they all seem likable. And they seem kind of fleshed out. Like it seems like they are actual characters and not just one dimensional people to get killed off. I don't know. I, 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 this is just so much better than part four. I just can't go. Uh, high points for this movie. Because uh, I'm not going to. I mean, you guys, you guys know this by now. You guys should already know this by now. Uh, I like the opening scene. I think uh, it was really good to get, or cool to give Cotton Weary a bigger part, even though he gets, I mean, it seems like a more predominant part, even though he does get killed off very early. But I love that opening scene. I thought that was great. Um, the idea, like you said, the idea with the voice uh, modulators, I thought that was really cool. I mean, that was a, a new twist on the whole thing. Um, this one does keep you guessing. I want to say this is the one that I can't tell you for sure. I remember in each movie, the first two, I guess, I knew Mickey did it in the second one, and I. I want to say I, I figured it was Stu for whatever reason. I just like I, it's fucking Stu because he's a little wacky or whatever. Uh, I never guessed Billy. I never guessed Billy's mother. And this one I didn't guess any of it. In fact, I want to say I thought it was actually the producer for some reason. I just felt like he was because uh, Lance Henderson plays. Uh, I forget the name of the producer, but anyways. I guess he's mad because they already stopped. Filming. Yeah, well, that's that. I feel like, you know, for some reason, I'm just like, he's an old school fucking, you know, he's the mastermind. He's older. He's, you know, and I, for some reason, I just figured like it would be him for some reason. Uh, but anyways, loved it. Loved every twist, every turn to it. Uh, the comedy's right in the right spots. And, and this one, 
you know, everybody's a suspect. You know, in every screen movie, you know, they, they do on certain little scenes or certain lines that people say that make you go, wait a minute, what do you mean by that? Whereas in 4, it was just way too fucking obvious. Like, the scene with uh, the deputy, the, the female deputy upstairs with Sydney, talking about part 4, how it was just like she's back in the shadows looking like a fucking psychopath doing this fucking monologue about how, like, oh, you didn't hang out with me because I wasn't a cool kid. It's like, really? Can we try any more harder there, Wes? God this damn. One like this cool. one, it just seems like it's not quite as in your fucking face with it, uh, which I like that. And, he, and he's mad, pretty much mad that he... Paid more to the mother, paid more to, well, the mother, to Sydney. What more attention? Then, it was all the attention. Like, like she oh. literally shut the door in her son's face and like, yeah. I have my own life right now. This is not, you know. Uh, I love that backstory. I, you know, that's the thing. I mean, it really was. It followed the rules of a trilogy perfectly. We get Jamie Kennedy, which this is the only franchise you will ever hear me praise Jamie Kennedy because fuck him on everything else. Uh, I love the character Randy coming back. In fact, I wish they would have incorporated him somehow in part four. And my thought was always, like even before part four was even thought of, I always thought it'd be neat, because they did kind of do the whole rules of reboot, but they had new fucking faggots that were the you know killers or whatever do the new rules. I didn't like that. I really wish, because at that point, I always said part four should have been just a series. Like... Now at this point we're, we're part four into the series, and now it's just it's just a uh, generic coming out, and it wouldn't be. I wouldn't. I would hope not. But I always figured like they would find like a uh, notebook that had like some scribblings from Randy, just some different you know passages, and one of them would be like the rules of you know when you get into a franchise that has literally just now they're just cranking out sequels. Here are the rules for that. I don't. That would be really cool, but we didn't get that. But it was really cool to see Randy you know give you the rules of the trilogy. Uh, I'll tell you right now, there's one scene. Now, I love the entire Scream trilogy. It's not that scary, you know. I never once, like, oh, shit, or like that. But there is one scene in this movie that gives me the fucking chills. Even now, I watched it, we watched it a couple nights ago, three nights ago, two nights ago. Night. Doesn't matter, day or night. And still, it's just kind of like, oh, shit. It's the dream sequence that uh, Sydney has of her mother. And it's just long take of her just walking up to the house. But then this one moment, she looks at the camera. She turns. She's, you know, she's walking. Boom. And dude, the look on her face. And then you see her at the window. Creepy as fuck. Uh, really dug that. Dug the little cameos. You know, you had Carrie Fisher. You had Jay and Silent Bob, which was just fucking awesome. Uh, didn't seem out of place to me. Like, I don't know. I can see people bitching about that. I thought it was funny. Uh, no, overall, a uh, huge fuck. I mean, this is, I mean, this ain't even a thumbs up. This is just fucking watch this shit. You should have already seen it. There's no way you haven't seen this. But, uh, in case if you somehow have not got around to Scream 3, fucking check it out. It's check great. Check out the eye also. It's pretty awesome. Uh, you know, Courtney Cox and David Arquette still married in this part. Love that. You can feel it, too. You can feel the chemistry between the two in the first three. And then they're divorced. And then when they do part four... There's, and they kept them together. They're like, this will be good. They'll just keep Dewey and fucking Gale together. I'm like, no. You should have split them up in part four, too, because they, literally they had no chemistry now. Like, literally, you can tell they do, they're they not in love and they don't like each other. And yet you went ahead and did it anyways. Uh, and right now, I love the ending to this. The ending to this... And in fact, looking back, that there should have never been part four. They should have stopped the trilogy. It was the perfect ending. Because it was literally... You know, she's dating a new guy. I mean, I'm assuming she's dating, you know, uh, Kincaid. He's fucking at her house, you know. And, you know, Gail and Dewey's there. He just proposed to her. And she comes back in from a walk, does not set the alarm, does not lock the door. And then when she gets kind of distracted by them, the wind kind of blows the door open. <clears throat> and she has that choice. Do I go shut it real quick? And she doesn't. And she fully moved on. Like, the transformation is complete. She went from being a scared victim to being like, you know, fuck it. I, you know, that you know, shit's happened, but, you know, you can't live your life in fear. Perfect. It really is the perfect trilogy. I mean, it, it's awesome. And, I don't know. Fuck 4. 4 is a bad taste of my mind. I'm sorry I'm so anti-4 in this Part 3 review, but I really don't like 4. And I, I've watched it twice, and it sucked each time. So, yes. Check this out. Awesome stuff. Check if out the eye. Absolutely awesome. have to. Give it a shot. It's awesome stuff. But check it out. Just remember, the Phantom's seal of approval is not on this. It's seal approval, seal of approval. 
What are you talking about back there? You are just... It's still approval of the eye. Are you on drugs? No, are you on drugs? I need to be. Kiss, kiss. All right, so guys, I, Scream 3. Die. We'll catch you guys later. Three.